A UBS transformer has an extremely thick output winding and because of that this small thing can output up to 100 amps which can even melt metals. So I thought to myself why not make a replacement for these expensive induction heating machines used in metal casting. Now, I have this leftover metal piece from a previous branch pruner project. So let's make the markings and reuse it for this project. Here I am cutting out two pieces for the contacts. Next comes the point marking on both of them. For drilling a 6.5 mm hole on each of the two pieces. After that, let's clean both the plates to prevent any conductivity problem because of the dust particles. Next, we will need a piece of floor tile because of its high resistance to heat plus high electrical resistance. So let's make the marking and cut it off with my hacksaw. After that, we have to place the contacts on the tile and mark two points for drilling two holes of 6.5 mm thickness it's for fitting these bolts and now that everything is done time to assemble everything together let's start with the testing part for which i have to connect the transformer output wires to the bolts for the input I'm choosing the green and black wires. Let's turn it on and use this metal wire for testing it. As you can see, it's working fine. Now, melting a wire is one thing and casting aluminium is another because it requires induced heating through graphite crucible, which is a good conductor of electricity and can withstand high temperatures. So let's place the crucible on the contacts and see what happens. The wire started smoking as expected because producing 100 amperes for a short span is one thing while handling it continuously is another. And looking at the thickness of the transformer wires, it is no surprise. Now, in my previous video, I made this big transformer oh, using four God. UPS transformers. So, if you want to watch the video, link will be available in the pinned comment as well as in the description. So, let's connect this transformer's output wires to the contactors. Turning it on. Now, if I bring my mic closer to the transformer, you can hear the humming sound. The amperes are quite high for this one, so safety should always be first. After that, let's carefully place the crucible on the contacts. If we check the drawn current, it's ranging from 100 amperes to 120 amperes. Although the spark and smoke on terminals indicates loose connections. Whoa. So, after correcting them both, the new current is reaching as high as 170 amps. Which means that a single transformer is handling more than 40 amperes, which is still high and not recommended. Now, let's use this digital thermometer and connect its sensor to the crucible with a clip. If we check the temperature now, we can see that it's rising quickly and has crossed 100 degrees. So this should work. If I add some more transformers and save the existing ones from overloading. Now I'm cutting off all the old connectors to prevent any possible heat loss that was occurring initially. After that comes the stripping part in which I have to keep the wire length same. Next, I am keeping my two new transformers at the bottom and the previous set on its top. So now I am going to zip tie all of them together just as I did to my previous set. Moving on to the wiring of the high voltage 220 volts side. 
where first I'm connecting the new transformers together and then connecting them to the older set. The chosen input wires as you can see are green and black because this combination can provide us with the minimum output voltage which is 7 volts. Next the zip tying part followed by the necessary taping. Now comes the parallel connection of the output wires for which I'm using this iron string used in building constructions. There is no specific reason for using them besides bundling. Next, I will use this discarded welding cable that can handle up to 150 amperes. Now, it's extremely important to use a high current copper wire to minimize the voltage drop. Here, you can see the way I'm connecting the welding cables to prevent any heat loss that could occur through connectors. Finally, connecting the overall output to the connectors on the tile. And now it's time to test it. So the connections are fine. Now placing the crucible on the contacts. Time to check the drawn current. It is drawing 245 amperes and a single transformer current 40 amps, still high. So now I'm going to use this 2 kilowatts dimmer circuit for reducing the input voltage fed to the transformer and thus limiting the overall output current to 120 amps with a single transformer current to only 20 amps or less. This is important for safety of the transformers. The crucible is still not reaching a temperature that can melt aluminium and all it is doing is melting some solder and some plastic pieces that is bad so let's check the transformer output voltage it is 3.5 volts ac the power consumed is only 420 watts so i can see only three options first the secondary winding modification for lower voltage and higher current second increasing the number of transformers until we reach the desired output temperature and the third, reducing the size of the crucible so that we can easily reach the aluminium melting temperature. Now, I do not have a crucible smaller than this one, but I do have some carbon brushes of different sizes. This one is big, so let's make a crucible with it. Now, I have chosen the third option of smaller crucible and discarded the rest because the project specifically aims at making a crucible heater without any complicated electronics or winding modification so that any one of you can easily make it at home. So here we have it nice and shiny. Although there is this hole for which I will use this cylindrical brush. So simply inserting it and cutting it. Now let's give this a try. So guys, finally let's place this crucible on the contacts. Let's turn it on. Oh, it is turning red now. Slowly and slowly we are reaching the temperature that we need to melt aluminium. It can melt any time now and it has started. <laughs> it's so cool. You see, it's going inside it. <laughs> that is so cool, man. I think it's filled. See, molten aluminium. 
so guys uh, that is all for today's video see you in the next one stay connected bye bye